topic under discussion today is misleading advertising. Still with us, Andy Rice, a debt fund at Har and Tembi MCB. Welcome again back to the show. Tembi, so do you find that there are seemingly trivial complaints coming through? you know, to the ASA. Yes. It's something that not, we, people don't really have grounds on, but yeah. they, they're still complaining. We do, we do get a lot of uh, what I would call trivial complaints. Um, I mean, I can give an example of one. About two, three years ago, um, uh, KFC advertised a bigger, bur uh, better burger. Mm -hmm. um, and we received a complaint from a consumer um, and they just were suspecting that the chicken uh, breast that was used or what was called the chicken breast is not chicken but you know for me they hadn't even gone and tested or bought it and tasted it they just you know uh, uh, had a suspicion and so for me I found that a bit trivial of course we looked at it and and and, and we threw it out uh, but in terms of our stats at least 70 percent of the consumer uh, complaints mm -hmm. uh, we find that they have no substance um, and then out of the 30 that remain uh, we also still fi dismiss some so, so right. quite a lot of, of, so of, of consumer, of at consumers, least, at least, okay, yeah. are dismissed. Yeah. So yeah. we are complainers at, you know, nature. Well, I, I, I'm not sure, to, do we say we're complainers or we just don't have other forums? You know, sometimes mm. the complain, the complainant actually really wants redress in the sense that they want their money back. Um, and so they feel, for us, it, it, it's actually uh, indicating that we work well and that we have integrity as an organization because they feel that they don't have anywhere else and, and their complaint can't be addressed anywhere else but with us. Right. So they will complain to us even though we don't have the jurisdiction. Yeah. Of course, we Just usually indicate. Just to maybe yeah. the opinion. Exactly. What about food regulations and food uh, labeling or debt? How do we know these days if something says it's fat free that it actually is fat free? Oh, <laughs> food and the um, infamous <laughs> chicken debate from December. Um, we don't actually, as a consumer, if you if you assume that a person is a layperson and and not a scientist or not a food technologist or not a doctor, we have to trust what is on the food packaging. Mm. And regulation becomes very important because it really is the point of the point of contact right. with the product um, and the point of information between consumer and product. Um, a simple case in point would have been this uh, chicken debacle that we've seen um, in recent weeks, where we as consumers were probably unaware of the fact that um, old chicken, yes. possibly not fit for human consumption yeah. chicken, has yeah. been refrozen, mm -hmm. injected with saline water, repackaged and sold as good as, as new. So if you don't know the back end of, of manufacturing, um, it's very possible without mm. regulation and without information on packaging that you could be um, placed in a very, very serious position as a, as a consumer. But it comes back to the brand again, Andy, because if I walk into a Woolworths, for example, I'm trusting that what I'm reading on the packaging is true. Yes, I think um, anyone who's invested as much as a Woolworths has invested over decades in their brand, and it's a tiny, tiny incremental process year on mm -hmm. year, millions upon millions, would be absolutely unwise to jeopardize that with one short-term gain. Mm -hmm. I think we also need to remember that there are, broadly speaking, two categories of uh, complaints that the ASA has to deal with. There's those that come from you and I as individual consumers, because yeah. we feel that we have been shortchanged in some way. But there is also the fact that competitors complain about right. their competitors. So um, if we take a, a, a foodstuff issue where um, there is a suspicion that it's not what it says on the box, you can be sure that that brand's competitor mm -hmm. is keeping a very watchful eye and they right. do have the technology yeah. and the professional mm -hmm. skills to mm -hmm. analyze and to come up with that answer. And no one gets away with it mm -hmm. for any length of time if they have a competitor who's right. on their toes. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on that. You're correct, we have a lot of uh, complaints around foodstuffs and it's, it really emanates from uh, what you call from the competitors but of course we've also got government regulations right. so even though us as consumers do not know what should what we should look for mm. there's already spe 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 government specifications yeah. in terms of what can be used what cannot yeah. be used and when they try and you know uh, uh, go over the, the competitor mm. will, will come in so most of those uh, kind of uh, complaints mm. will come in from the competitor because otherwise they lose mm. you know to to the but that was parties. only the first part that has been rolled out and it was rolled out last year in terms of regulations and then the second part will be rolled out in 2012 and then of course the consumer protection Act will also be there. Mm. So what would your role look like once all these regulations are in place, once the uh, Consumer Protection Act is in place, 
what is the role of the AASA? It, it, it actually enhances our role. It actually, one, indicates that we're all along when necessary. But if you look at the Consumer Protection Act, uh, it provides for accreditation of such bodies like, uh, uh, what you call, uh, like uh, um, ASASA. Uh, and so mm -hmm. once we're accredited, any complaints, um, I don't want to go through the long process, but just a short term, if, mm. if we are accredited, any uh, advertising complaints would then be forwarded, uh, forwarded to us. So we'd still look at it. So they do recognize uh, what we call industry ombudspeople or adjudicating bodies. Mm. Uh, so so we, we see that our role will be enhanced and we suspect that there'll actually be an increase in the number of, uh, of mm. complaints mm. because people don't only now use us, but right. they would use uh, the Consumer Protection Act. But then there are exceptions to the rule, Odette, and this is where the creativity of, of the agencies and the ads come into play, isn't it? Because, I mean, you can use expression of opinion. Absolutely. Um, you can use obvious un mm. untruths. Mm. Um, and so there, is it a fine line, or, I mean, is that just an exception to the rule? Well, where people really need to know, you know, need to know if we promise to, to fly you to the moon, that's definitely not going to happen. I must just say that we do have a clearance um, mechanism in the industry before ads are actually even flighted. Yeah. So scripts are sent through to us, to the ACA, for clearance to, to check against regulation, to mm -hmm. check against false claims, to check mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. all sorts of possible issues that may arise, be it from a consumer, a competitor, regulation, even perhaps the ASA, mm -hmm. from a ruling point of view. And we have very diligent agencies that actually go ahead and do that. The purpose is not to stifle creativity. It's yeah. merely to check for adherence or com and compliance to very critical re regulation and to do what exactly Andy was saying, to ensure that the brand can sustain itself with the campaign mm. and also the industry as a whole reputationally, that it is um, protected against any rogue um, yeah. you know, initiatives. Mm. I must just also say that it was interesting to see a lot of competitors jump to the fore when, when um, you have complaints come out about products that are not performing or that are defective and they actually go and enhance their brands by mm. being seen as being proactive and delivering quality mm. um, on the back end of those complaints. So sometimes a lot of good comes from um, the complaints the that complaints, actually come out yeah. in the first place for yeah. other brands, for competitor brands. Yeah, I think that um, there's a real risk um, that the industry, the whole marketing and advertising industry gets tarred mm. um, uh, mm. by one or two rogues out mm. there. I mean, for example, um, South African breweries have a marketing um, and sales compliance committee which vets every single piece of advertising before it goes out into the marketplace mm. internally, voluntarily, yeah. uh, to check against not only their own code of conduct, but the ARA, which is the responsible um, advertising mm. association yeah. for all of the liquor manufacturers. Yeah. So at least two codes of conduct. Mm -hmm. If you are a brand manager at South African Breweries, you have to submit even a leaflet to this committee of, yeah. of, of lawyers and... and but uh, they're so under the spotlight, Andy. Do you think that's maybe why they're being so proactive? Yes, as liquor, as liquor does have a, some controversial aspects yeah. to it, but I do think that it is, it is the five percent who give the ninety-five percent a bad name, yeah. generally mm. speaking. Sure. And if you have sure. a brand with the with the heritage of South African breweries and the stature, mm. you certainly you can't would make, take that chance. Yeah, you would take every precaution to protect it. Absolutely. And I just wanted to indicate that you know that you are allowed to 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 hype your your product, and we don't of find course. that as, as misleading or. Or untruths, you know, and we have to break through the clutter. Yeah, we've had a number of uh, rulings around yeah. that where people have complained and have said, "But if you look at this, this is hype." Yes. Any, you know, reasonable person, because we use the reasonable person. Yeah. You know, any reasonable person would look at this and see that this is hype. Mm. It's just selling mm. uh, the product. You mm. know, so there's no harm done. There's um, no harm so, done. so we do have, yeah, we do have that. I read uh, somewhere that even well. the tobacco com companies have been tasked not to to change their packaging, not to say they can't say it's a light cigarette or ultra mild because that implies that it's less harmful mm. so where do we draw the line are we going to become like the Americans where we have to say when we are offering you a cup of coffee that it's hot <laughs> <laughs> you know where where do we draw the line yeah there's a big question With responsibility that, you, know, versus versus you know tobacco is obviously the first um, case study that we have for mm. if you want to look at harmful uh, mm. substances and we're going through a very similar process now with alcohol mm. advertising mm. and we've got to be very careful that we provide information to consumers, but whilst the product remains legal, the manufacturers have a constitutional right to market those products. Mm. And mm. Th that is something we need to be very, very careful about. And we've seen now with tobacco, we've banned the advertising. Has it meant that less people have s 
stopped smoking. It hasn't. Absolutely no. not. Mm. And what we've seen in terms of ad spend is that the shift has gone from above the line to below the line. And I think what is also quite interesting about tobacco, and I don't smoke, I'm no apologist for the industry, is that the restrictions on what they can do legitimately has encouraged uh, pirate products to come in. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, uh, yes. uh, mm. there's a very interesting campaign on air at the moment from BAT yeah. saying, look what happens to the money that you spend on pirated cigarettes because you choose to go for those rather than for the branded ones. At least, at least have your enemy in your camp where you can control Keep them a, rather, rather than closer. encouraging them to, Keep to operate outside. Keep your friends close your em enemies even closer. Mm -hmm. We'll yeah. have to leave it there. Thank you, Andy and Odette and uh, Tembi from the ASA. Thank you for joining us today.